at least it's the book daily life. What it becomes for you and what it becomes for me can be, according to God's own purposes and plan, Him speaking to us or sharing with us His heart or maybe inspiring us in a way and direction with which we should go. And that's what I like about devotional and sharing devotionals is that we all have different perspectives, different backgrounds, different places that we've come from, and we all attend and go to churches and st churches and steeples and all the peoples know, uh, churches and even steeples and maybe synagogues or maybe temples, but cathedrals even, but God is always there that we can always turn to him and he will always be there for us because Jesus said that if we are his that he would never leave us nor forsake us and that God had inscribed our names on the palms of his hand and when you think of it that way then you look forward to whatever it is that God may speak to you whatever God may share because you know he loves you you know that you have a positive end you know where you're going you know how you got where you are today <laughs> And whether it be for good or whether it be for bad, sometimes you reap what you sow. But you know that God holds you and protects you. He guides you. He's training you. He's teaching you. He's helping you. He's showing you the way that it can be easier or that it can be, let's just say, unique to you as you follow him. Because sometimes... When God has to train up a child, he chastens us. And I've been chastened. Shoot, I got it the other day. I might even get it before the day's out because, you know, we're all sinners and we're all saved by grace. And a righteous man falls down seven times and rises up again. And I think it may be a personal opinion, but I think every day, everyone in some way sins. And every day, all through the day, we need to be aware of our sins so that we would be tender-hearted and merciful to those and kind sharing with each other the forgiveness that God has for us because he died for all our sins past present and future so in daily light in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and at my supplications because he has inclined his ear unto me Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. When you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them on my Father which is in heaven. You know, I, I think about prayer and I know that when I used to explore my <laughs> heritage, I, uh, I dobbined. I know how. <laughs> I know how to dobbin. <laughs> I have a, I have a sitter. You know, I have a prayer sitter. And you know, if you go to a Jewish synagogue in the morning, you can be there for hours <laughs> in repetition of the Amida and the Chekiano and all the other portions of prayer, the Esmoniyas, say, and all segmented and they're all designed in order to create for the person the environment that there was in the temple when the priest used to sacrifice unto God. It's supposed to make you think of and cover any aspect of your life that might be sinful so that way you don't approach a holy God with the sinful nature because in the Jewish mindset you'd be terminated. <laughs> So it's creating a spiritual barrier, so to speak, between you and God, but also connecting you so that you can still approach him without getting too close, without being too far away. 
it's an interesting concept, but it's really eh, not there. Because Jesus took us as a more intimate way. He brought us into a more personal fellowship. He wants us to have a more real relationship as opposed to being a distant observation or a distant fully manifestation. And you know, I see that in a lot of religions when they create this format for prayer or when we ourselves do the same thing, when we have to make it a certain way or a certain formula. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love to go into a Catholic church and I love to, you know, I do so many speeches, talk to you know, and do the cross and bow the knee and, you know, sit down and do the pew and light the candle and, you know, do all that. Because it reminds me of the Jewish side, you know, now on the Jewish side, well, you know, guess what? <laughs> on Friday nights, you know, you can have a Shabbat service, you know, and do the whole thing. But the point is, when I went to Greek Orthodox, the same thing. It was beautiful. I saw beauty and wonder in all that people in their way of expression were desiring to touch the heart of God and to delight Him in what they were doing. Now, God said, if you delight yourself in the Lord your God, He'll give you the desires of your heart. But I didn't see these people as being wrong so much as I saw them as seeking to find what was right. And that should be our attitude in prayer. Always seeking to find what is right with God and how he can instruct us how he would be talked to, how he would be petitioned, how he would be approached, how he would be prayer. You know, I mean, a lot, somebody had to sit down and design all these ideas that they had in order to come up with like the Catholic Missal and the Jewish Siddur and the Lutheran, can't even think of the name of it right now. But they all have structured and somebody had to design it and the original designs that they were doing was just simply because they loved the Lord. So I don't treat them as bad. I just say it's a lot more fun to sit here with coffee and share the Lord than it is to sometimes, you know, prostrate yourselves or humble yourselves in a way that reminds you to be humble. But you can also be mindful of that and you can talk to God all through the day. And in daily life, all thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Praise the Lord. You know, I like that. But you know what I like more? I grew up with all the wonderful, you know, contemporary Christian music and praise and all the other services that there are around. But the thing that I delight in is when a person out of the sudden inspiration of their own heart just chooses whatever part of their day they're in to just praise the Lord. I used to love it when the Jesus freaks were around and I could always find someone who just simply said, praise the Lord, you know, a minute. You could tell. They just went, wow, praise the Lord, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, it was simple. It wasn't complicated. It was like what the old style, and even some to this day still do, the old amen, amen. You know, I mean, it's funny when you say amen because it's so be it, and in a Jewish format, it's kind of a different mentality. But anyways, you know, I understand when people say amen, you know, they're kind of like, they've gotten used to it. It's a shtick. You know, it's a vernacular. It's a colloquialism. It's a visible expression or an audible expression of a token of faith that they use. And for us in the contemporary, we were saying praise the Lord, so it's the same way. And I like that. But you know, I don't like it when it becomes just rote. I like when something is just suddenly, wow. And you come up with your own way of expressing praise to God. Because that, my friend, <laughs> is what Jesus does and did, and you, when you find that truth to be true in your life, you'll enjoy a really cute little blessing from God that he just might be listening a little closer 
when the praise is coming from your heart and not the memory of your mind.